What's up, everybody? Welcome to PlayStation Best Friends, a PlayStation podcast by the community for the community, inspired by the infamous play- PS I Love You XOXO podcast. Today we have Anthony. Anthony, how you doing? What's going on, Jeff? Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, looking forward to pretty starting good. this pod. Yeah, how's your Mother's Day going? Um, pretty good. I went to a little Italian shop downtown New Haven in Connecticut today, so... Uh, it was good. We had a big family thing. I have a my my mom's side of the family is all Italian, so there's a lot of food. Nice. And on the other end, we have Miguel. Miguel, how's your Mother's Day going? Well, um, I'm Hispanic, so mine was the tenth of May. That was on Wednesday, and it was pretty good. Oh, is that as like a cultural thing? You guys do different days? Yep. It's usually it's every tenth of tenth of May. What instead is of, instead of the second? I think it's the second, right? Of um, second Sunday of May over in the U.S. I guess I have that, no idea. I, just <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I know it's it's oh, it always just sneaks up on you somehow, yep. and then yep. it's, it happens uh, it's all an time. event. I guess it would oh. be the second Sunday of May. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, we celebrate the tenth of May every year. That's so. interesting. Consistent. Yep. I like. What it. are you guys playing? So, what are you guys playing? Any mother's base games? Of Isaac. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, I mean, I was playing The Witness before, and that's a game about being sad and alone. So, um, I guess not. Is that a game about being sad? I, got... I mean, it makes me feel sad and alone because I'm not smart enough to figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> Miguel, what you got? Oh, I got um, I picked up um, Mass Effect Andromeda yesterday. I just started. I probably played like you know, two hours of the game, and I like it so far. So that's really only half the story, though, because you messaged both of us last night, and you're like, "Should I get Mass Effect or should I get Zelda?" And I know Zelda's not a PlayStation game, but I think most PlayStation fans would even agree that Zelda might be the superior game. So it's funny. You're like, "Which one should I get?" And Jeff and I were both like, "Please, God, get Zelda." And you're like, "Nah, I bought both." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was I was there already. I'm like, eh, I'm here, you know. You just pick both of them. What? I'm not, dude. Plus, yeah. That's a great deal you got. Plus, uh, use that uh, 25 percent. What was it? 25 dollar certificate that I had from uh, Best Buy. Plus the discounts, 20 percent off on each one. Oh, it's good. We're living in a crazy world that Mass Effect is like a bad game, and it's not even. It's just because of the games it's around seven. it are yeah, so it's good. A seven. Yeah, it's like uh, even two weeks or a couple weeks before that, near near Automata came came out, which I'm playing now, and that game is is wow, out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere. It's a bummer too, because uh, um, Neo came out right before that too, and so there's just yep. so many games and just not enough time. And yeah. most of them are really good. Not enough time though. That's a problem. Persona Five. I haven't even like. I'm scared to go back to Persona Five because. I just got past the first palace, which is like the dungeon for people not familiar. And it's just, it's like you need to, like so much time goes by and you could do absolutely nothing in that game. It's like, I'm just so scared that I'm either never going to get to it or I'm only going to play it and touch nothing else. Yeah. Like, I, like the general consensus on that is that if that was on the switch, it'd be, that would even on the V the, uh, like, that would rival game of the year so hard. If that was a switch game. Dude, if it was on the Vita, I would love it. I don't even care if they downgraded the graphics a little bit. I mean, they would probably have to downgrade a lot, but I think it, it, it's on PS3 now. I feel like yeah, it's on PS3. Why? Oh. Can, maybe we'll get like some a tinkering. sort of five, some like... hardcore tinkering, maybe. Yeah. It yeah. Took them long enough to get the game out as it is, so I guess I can't complain. All right, but about Mass Effect, let's move on to what is and forever will be Moriarty support. Time for some news. We got uh, seven items on the list. A baker's dozen. Are we going to keep that? I feel like Greg might get mad if we keep that. One time off, PlayStation Best Friends, baker's dozen. Yes, sir. I'm going to start it up, I guess. Uh, first, first item on the list. BioWare has put Mass Effect in hiatus and turned a drama developer, BioWare Montreal, into a support studio. According to four sources close to the company, 
Last month, a number of BioWare Montreal employees were transferred to the studio EA Motive to work on Star Wars Battlefield 2. BioWare Montreal will also continue to patch and support Andromeda's multiplayer. Came from uh, Kotaku. So, what do you guys think about it? That's that's crazy. It's... I don't know. Like, did they ever say this is going to be a new trilogy? No. I know there's a lot of new stories. No, this hint, is not Shepard. I know like this is not connected to one, two, three. They said, but did they ever say this was going to be a new trilogy? They hinted. That was it. They said they it may said it. or may not, I believe. It's something something like very vague, like this isn't necessarily a trilogy, I think is what they said. Probably mean I'm just sure meaning we want to see what happens and then it bombed and then they're not doing a trilogy. Yeah. So most likely. Uh this isn't a surprise to me. Um which sucks because I never want to see anyone lose their job. But um I mean, they're getting transferred. It's not like they're losing their jobs. Not that well, we, we don't know, know if anyone's getting, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, we know people are getting moved around, um, reshuffled, and they're, you know, their support studio. So now they might just be cleaning up bugs or or, or their design and textures for oh, another game. You know I'm what I mean? I'm sure they're cleaning up bugs. So, um, but yeah, I'm not super surprised. Uh, it's unfortunate, but this mass effect game see the thing about andromeda and i'm gonna preface this by saying i haven't beaten it yet i'm not even halfway through it yet it feels like fan fiction just none of the characters feel like mass effect characters to me um the 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 like the story itself just feels it doesn't feel like mass effect the stakes don't feel as big despite the fact that it's a whole new galaxy like it just it just feels like oh well we can't bring up Mass Effect 3's ending because it's supposed to be up to the player so how do we get around it and I, I don't know I I personally and my best friend as well we both kind of think this um I think just blow it up just uh you could leave this as canon or whatever that's fine I don't know how it ends so I don't even know if this game makes sense for a sequel or the you know the story but I think just find another angle. Do a prequel Mass Effect game. Do a game in between two and three. Do, do you, know do you what think? I mean? Do you think we even need a Mass Effect? Can Mass Effect have just been like they're done with it and Bioware works on the next thing? You know, I maybe. I mean, if they put a fucking HD collection on current gen, maybe. Just leave it alone yeah. after that. Let me ask a question here. Do you guys think the game would have sold more or less if it had the Mass Effect name? I would have just called it Andromeda. If it, didn't, if it didn't have the name, if it was just Andromeda, if it didn't, yeah, not Mass Effect Andromeda. Just say that it definitely sold less. I think. Definitely. I think it would have sold less. I think it would have gotten less heat. I think That's it would. I think it, it I may think... have had the potential to become a cult classic a year from now. Yeah, because we're comparing it to Mass Effect, which the three games were great, right? Not even comparing it to Mass Effect. We're comparing it to Bioware games. And even as a Bioware game, I don't even... But not only I, that, I, I mean, the release window makes us compare it to Horizon Zero Dawn and Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, I, try, I, I, I played it, and I tried separating myself from its release window, and I, I just still think it falls. It, it doesn't hit a lot of marks. But uh, I, My biggest issue with Andromeda so far, like I said, I'm about four or five hours in is the characters just don't feel right to me. Um, I mean, that guy Liam that's in your party is just kind of a douchebag, and I just kind of don't care about him at all. And the other characters, there's a female Krogan in the beginning of the game. Um, I don't think that's a spoiler, but the game's been out long enough anyways. Um, and it's super early in the game. There's a female Krogan that like it's really pretty, yeah, threw me it's off. pretty much at the beginning. It really threw me off. Yeah. Um, not that I have a problem with female Krogan, because I do not at all. There's been female Krogans in the past. Well, I think Mass Effect 3. It's just the voice for it. And I don't think the voice actress did a bad job. I think it just doesn't f sound like it would come out of a Krogan creature. It doesn't you know feel I mean? natural. Like it felt, yeah, it felt weird. Um, and I just noticed a lot of different stuff about that. Like it, it just felt like a lot of fan fiction created characters for the Mass Effect universe. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, so the next story is a pretty funny one. Uh, let's read that. So, all right. Um, this is coming from a Steelers fan. New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady will be the cover athlete of Madden NFL 18. EA Electronic Arts has announced that me, uh, Madden NFL 18 will release for PS4 Worldwide on August 25th with Tom Brady, quarterback for the New England Patriots, 
Um, it's going to be called the GOAT edition. G-O-A-T is in greatest of all time, which is not true. Um, but I guess that's subject to... There's there's periods in that one or on the on the branding like in the box? Yeah, yeah. there's, there's, there's G-O-A-T no, periods. periods. Okay, okay. The GOAT edition. Like, how, first of all, <laughs> how corny is on that? The cover? Second of all, like supposedly I, I heard they didn't even have a cover vote that they just did it um which i think is a little have bullshit. they been doing votes the past couple yep the, yeah i they did a vote with um peyton hillis in they did it last year too because gronk won last 14? year right yeah oh they've always been doing votes since they started doing votes okay yep. now who was before gronk um, but yeah gronk was uh, i want to say uh 16 wasn't he the has his hands boom, open right? Was it Richard Sherman? Yes, oh, no, Odell. Open. Odell Beckham Jr. And then before that was the Legion of Boom with Richard was, Sherman. Was it him or was it... Um, I think it was Cam. Uh, uh, bon Miller. No, Cam Newton lost to Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, was, was OBJ the one with the hands open and it yep. looked really stupid yep. as fuck? Yep, it, it broke oh, the game with uh, that stretched out Y cat, uh, like the Y button or triangle button. Um, um, but yeah, I find this funny that Tom Brady oh, okay, is yeah. like on the cover. Um, Why? Just because, just because. I mean, not, he not just even, won the the Super Bowl. I mean, so. Yeah, no, not even that. Just just because of the shit with uh, him and Goodell. I don't know. I find that like. But it's separate. The no, game. Okay, yeah, let's so separate. But like in a way, it's let's like. Let's clarify whose teams kind of like do all of us support. Obviously, I'm a Steelers fan because I said it already. Yeah, I'm not the biggest sport guy, but just because family and location, uh, Jets. Okay, and I'm uh, I'm not a big football guy, but uh, the Bears. Right, because you're from football Chicago football. and Jeff's from. Yep. New York. New York. Um, so yeah. I'm a Steelers fan because I refused to be a Patriots fan growing up. Um, <laughs> and I watched Ben come out of Miami of Ohio. And so I started watching the Steelers after that. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't buy Madden anymore anyways, so it doesn't really matter to me. I just thought, I thought it was a little corny anyway. is all. That was cute. All right, next one. Uh, Square Enix has the... Clear its decision of to withdraw from Danish developer IO Interactive. The company made the announcement alongside its financial results for the physical year at the end of March, uh, March 31st, 2017. Now, there are some rumors that popped out in the last couple of days that IO Interactive has kept the Hitman uh, IP name. And rumors that Square Enix is actually trying to sell the company. Have you guys heard anything about that? Uh, so I saw a GameSpot article about them retaining the IP, uh, IO Interactive, that is. I'm trying to pull that article up now. IO Interactive retaining Hitman's IP. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's not um, I don't know if there's any. Yeah, though. I don't know if it's confirmed. I think it's. Yeah, it's still rumor. So Hitman's feature is up in the air, but. What's certain right now is IO is will no longer be working with Square Enix. Um, interesting. I, I they definitely the Hitman uh, season one definitely did well. Uh, uh, performed well critically. Performed uh, well after it, it released, because when it released, uh, what I was hearing it was the reviews were good, but the sales weren't until a couple months later. But I, I, I did the sales ever like were. Because it picked up after a while. It didn't blow it the... It picked up, but I feel like it wasn't worth Square Enix's money. I'm just basing that off of them selling it. Um, but, uh, and uh, yeah. You think it had something to do with the the episodic nature of it? Or do you think they were unrelated, really? That I think it's unrelated. The I, I think it's... Yeah. It could be... You know what? Let's step I back for a second. think related. Cause... Let's just step back for a second and think about Square Enix as an overall company. A lot of their Japanese IPs have been getting noticed. So maybe, I mean, th this is totally, you know, just me spitballing here, but maybe they're just focusing yeah. on their on their Eastern development. Except for, obviously, Tomb Raider, which sells, you know, fairly well. I mean, it's been underperforming, according to What them. do you mean? What's getting noticed besides Final Fantasy? Well, there's Final Fantasy fifteen just launched to great success. Um, they have... Dragon Crest Warriors Two just came out. Um, it's getting you know mm -hmm. sevens and eights. It's, a, it's it's you know it's a good game. It's not amazing. Um, Dragon Quest Builders was good. Um, isn't uh isn't Nier Automata published by Square Enix? I think Nier is. I think it's published by them. I don't think it's their, their, it's not their studio. 
No, near might be some. Um, yeah, but still, I'm looking up near right now. But still, wouldn't it be just like beneficial to have like a bigger? Um, yeah, Platinum Games published by Square Enix. Yeah. Well, so then you, so it it whittles down to you think there's not as much interest as they had hoped in Hitman. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's. Did we all play Hitman? I played. I rented it. I played the opening tutorial on that boat, and then I got into Paris, and it was uh, it was just like too daunting. It was. I, I'm not really into stealth guy, and it presented me with way too much. And like I, I totally get it. Like, I guess it's how games handle the freedom, because like uh, I guess you could make the com- comparison to Breath of the Wild. But at no point in the Breath of the Wild, in Breath of the Wild, have I was I ever felt like, you know, what there's too many things to do right now. I'm gonna put it down. Whereas in Hitman, there was there was every objective was so it was like ten different ways you could go about a thing, and ten different ways that not like oh find out for yourself. Ten different ways that the game says it's like yeah, it gives you a whole list of things, and then it's like here's a bunch of items, and it's like ah. See, that's I think what I, I liked know. about it is that it gives you ten yeah. different things, and you just pick whichever one you want to do. And then you replay it and do it a different way the next time. And I guess it comes down to the person because if you just want to play through it just one time, then yeah, I can see like you're like, well, do I want to drop a speaker on his head or do I want to shock him to death or do I want to just shoot him, shoot his brains out with a sniper? Whereas me, I'm like, I want to do all of them. I just want to go back and do it over and over again. So I guess it depends on the person playing it. Um, yeah, because I went through, I bought it on the holiday. It was like 25 bucks, the competitive edition. And I did the same thing. I went through the tutorial. I cleared everything out, got everything done. I started at um the Paris uh, mission, and I just stopped. I didn't feel like in the mood. It's one of those games, I think, that you need to be in the mood to play it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. So I actually – so I played it the most out of everyone then because I played through, obviously, the tutorial. I did Paris, Sapienza, uh, Marrakesh, and I'm in Bangkok now, I believe. Yeah, I actually well, I wanted to get that, to the Marrakesh uh, PlayStation part. Gets it, though. I wanted to get to the Marrakesh part just because I was I've been to Marrakesh and want to see how the game replicated it. Yeah, Sapienza uh, was beautiful too. I mean, if you well, you yeah. said you rented it, right? I rented a game flight. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say if you still had it, I would definitely suggest going back to it. I must have got it in a time where I just didn't have time to play other games. But um, you know what? I I, th- I yeah. feel like Call- Hitman might be a good summer game. Like if you're just kind of like you're sitting around, you don't know what to play. Just throw on like an episode of Hitman. Uh, I don't know. So I mean, it's another bummer. Another one. I don't know if I saw this one coming as much as I saw the previous Mass, uh, Mass Effect. Yeah. The, um, no. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, is right prediction right now. It's gonna be a plus game soon. Calling it. You think so? The really? first no. season will be a plus game soon. Well, Maybe the well, intro pack. Do you guys I don't think know about that PlayStation has a chance of getting the? I will interact with. Was Hitman ever exclusive Ooh. to PlayStation? Or was it only no, was it just only on I PlayStation it'll... because Xbox wasn't out yet? I think it was Because it was on PS2, right? Like in the PS2 era is also. I'm pretty sure it was on either uh PC at the same time as well. Uh or Xbox. I don't think it was on Xbox though. I think it was eventually. I don't know if the first Hitman was, yeah. but I think um Absolution definitely was. I do not remember. I don't know if Blood Money was. Talking about stealthy guys, up next on the list. Uh oh, <laughs> and another unsurprising one. Uh, it appears the next Assassin's Creed Origins will likely take place in the Egyptian setting, thanks to a leaked screenshot that has reportedly been confirmed as legitimate by non Ubisoft sources, and that is from Gamespot. Um. Surprise, surprise. Happens every time. Ah. This is interesting because the Egyptian setting has been leaked for so so many times that, like, oh, I guess this is the year we get to the Egyptian one. You know? Like, I remember, like, uh, Syndicate, people thought that year's one was going to be Egyptian, and then the one before that, it was supposed to be Egypt. Like, there was always an Egyptian one, like, rumored and stuff in the rumor mill. But cool, like, this set, this seems like it's the, the concrete rumor that... Yeah. uh yeah. Plus, plus I like it? the Would original you... original name Assassin's Creed Origins. <laughs> so is this going back to like have what's the farthest back we have been in Assassin's in the Assassin's Creed universe? Is this going to be the farthest back we've been? 
One. One yeah. was uh, Crusades. Uh, if they do it another, so this will be farther than that, obviously. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so maybe this is the birth cool. of the cool Assassins? That's good. We're going by Origins. Um, there is some lore. The lore is really explained a lot in uh in two i remember at in the at Ezio's house with all the statues of all the assassins and i think the egyptians probably were one of the first i'm trying to think of who would have been oh before my god them. you're so right about the about Ezio's house i totally forgot about that there were roman ones yeah the, yeah those pretty much laid out most of the i'm pretty sure almost all those wait no that can't be true because in his house had to be all of them before the 1400s because they're mm. in Ezio's house so yeah so it's before edward and connor yeah yeah oh yeah that's some deep assassin's creed lore <laughs> and wow with a with a third sneaky boy next topic next story Ooh. a new tiff game could be in the works according to the website of the series upcoming hollywood adaption in quotes Widely considering to be one of the greatest games ever created, a fifth sequel is currently in development to be released in step with this motion person adaption. Okay. Yes, yeah, so um, a, a new thief game coming out, maybe rumored, uh, and have something to do with a movie coming out at the same time. Uh, I don't know. Based on like video game movies track records, I feel like the game probably will come out and the movie will either suck or be delayed or get out of the way. I don't think the game will really uh, I don't think it's going to have anything to do with the movie. I think it'll just really like with it. Yeah. But um but um interesting interesting nonetheless. Yeah. So what do we got? We got remasters coming up next. No thoughts on Thief? <laughs> I never played a Thief game. Um, yeah, I I've, I've, <laughs> haven't played them. And, uh, I got one of them free with... It was either PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, and I never I touched it. I think that's Games with Gold. Yeah, I, think I, I, I never played it either, but I, I don't know. I mean, I know... Because uh, I'm, I'm a huge Bioshock fan. I have the you know Jack's Lynx tattooed on my wrists, and I know uh, Ken Levine loves the Thief games. I just... I, I don't know. I was always a Metal Gear guy. Didn't they... Um... Offer one of the games for PS PlayStation um, Plus. I think it was Games of Gold. Was the most recent Thief game. Oh, okay. It was the first one, right? Or, or I think it might have been the PS3 version of it. it was a Plus game. Yeah, because I remember them. I think that was it. It was the PS3 version of Thief when the PS4 was, or it was like 14 or 15 by the time, and it was like, I'm not. There's no shot. I'm going back to this game. And it was also while the game was relatively new. But, um, no, didn't they do Dishonored? Are you thinking Dishonored, the PS3 version? Because I know Dishonored was a PS3 game one. at one point. They could have, they, Unless they, that they, was an they, Xbox they game involved too. I can't keep track anymore. Or they all do the same thing. Bo- yeah, both of those are Xbox they, games. They do, Regardless both of, sides do it's like the same games at some point or another. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on because we don't really have anything to say on Thief. <laughs> all right, on the heels of the recent PS4 remaster of Parappa the Rapper... The creators of Parappa and Gitaru Man have teamed up to make a new rhythm game called Project Rab- Project Rap Rabbit. I'll try saying that five times fast. Uh, and that's sourced from GameSpot. I, another one I just don't care about. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I, I never played Parappa. Yeah, neither have I. I played the demo. I, I uh, It's like a uh, it's like a rhythm game. With like, it's kind of, I don't know, it felt slow to me. If it I showed mean, its, its age, it, you know, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's an old game. But... Yeah. So good for the studio. I'm glad they're working on something they want to work on. Apparently it's, you know, it seems like, but um, I'm just, I, I don't think it'll sell well because I don't think Parappa the Rapper sold well. And I don't think it got critically received well when it re-released. For the next story, the last one, the latest weekly sales charts from the physical game sales in Australia and New Zealand have arrived. Uh, in Australia, Prey landed number two. It was outsold by AFL Evolution, what, which I thought it was uh, 
knockoff Madden game, but I guess it's rugby. And in New Zealand, Prey did a little bit better. It was first, and AFL was on second. So AFL, just to clarify, is the Australian Football League. Um, and I thought it was I, – I didn't know because I, I listened to Alana talk about it on IGN. Um, shout out to Alana Pierce. And she described it as basically sounding like American football when she, like, she could have just said rugby. <laughs> So I was kind of confused, and then yeah, I guess I saw the, it up the, and it was, it's rugby. the gameplay, and it looks like rugby. I, like I know I played a little rugby when I was in high school, and it looks like rugby. I guess they they call rugby football over there. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know much football uh, in those, England uh, is different from football in America, which is different from football in Australia. I guess. Yeah, I'm just uh, happy. I guess just to pray up there. People are still interested in that franchise. People are still interested in single player sci fi shooters. I think that's great. I haven't gotten it to my I haven't gotten it yet to my um personally, but uh I'm waiting I'm... a little bit on Prey. Um supposedly yeah. they fixed it. They mm-hmm. fixed that game breaking patch that oh, IGN the... experienced. But that wasn't PC, was it? It was on PC, but I mean who knows with I haven't heard anything about the console release. I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm not really in the mood for that anyways. So uh that's a game I I'll, I'll, I'll game fly it maybe next month or maybe in July. I'm hearing it runs terrible on PlayStation 4 right now. That's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll wait and see if it clears up and if it doesn't run well. Like the loading times are just fucking long. And if that's if there's anything. Which that... doesn't surprise me because Dishonored 1 and 2's loading times were atrocious as well. And it's arcane. So. Yeah. It's probably Good to see it selling, like, at least. Uh, Good to see it selling. Wait until a price cut, probably. Um, I'll probably game flat, to be honest. Um, I'll probably do it, like I said, next month or maybe July. Dude, I'll have Gamefly here? Miguel, you have Gamefly? Uh, no, I don't. Yo, gotta get that. Uh, like hey, supporting don't, don't, don't be uh, plugging ads for Gamefly <laughs> just yet. <laughs> Never mind, don't get Gamefly. <laughs> we'll wait till we have our own coupon code. But let's move on to the next segment, The Drop, from our best friend, the powerhouse of PlayStation, Ryan Clements, bringing us every game coming out this week. We got a lot of stuff, whether or not it's good or not. I guess games. we're gonna have to wait and find out. Let's run over them. Boom. Starting at the top, some always at the top because it's ACA Neo Geo over the top. Some racing game, Akiba's Beat that's coming to PS4 digital. Akiba's Beat PS4, PS Vita digital retail. I saw something about this, uh, where uh, one of the translators wanted wrote something, but then like the publisher was censoring it. Then it came back, and then he was pissed off about that. But then the creator himself was like, uh, once he like understood how it translated into English, he's like, "Oh, censor that." But then like <laughs> it was a weird position That's by the translator because then he wanted his name omitted yeah, from the credits. It's like, where do you like what? No, you're whatever. But uh, a Vita game, fun. I think it's a um, uh, like a uh, like a, a visual novel or something. Like There's another game that came out recently against. that I think is similar to that. Um. I can't remember the name of it. I think there were, I think Akiba's trip as well. Maybe that's what it was. Or it's something yeah. I don't know. These I feel like these games Next are getting got, more frequent. Yeah. Like these yeah, weird much rhythm the like visual novel games. Yeah. Uh next game, Bala B- Baya Latino. Is that right? Say Baila that? Latino. Baya Latino. It's, uh, it's description game. on the blog is a fun dance game for all your family and friends. Come to PS4 and digital. I just need to sure. point out the cover for this is hilarious that's all i have to say about Why? it go look go look it up on on the playstation blog if you're listening to yeah, this it's, it looks it's, like it's the kind shittiest of ripoff of the shittiest ripoff of just dance you have yep, seen all week that's what i was thinking next black and white bushido coming to ps4 digital and 517 uh beat him up chroma squad ps4 digital out 519 that game Guys, looks like it's gonna be games. i'm sorry to cut you off that looks like it's gonna be yeah. a ps plus game eventually yeah, I hope not, because, I don't know. Um, but yeah, guys, keep your games coming out on Tuesday. We don't need a game coming out on the 17th, a game on the 19th, one day. Demo, The Last Recital, PS4 Digital. Well, this one looks interesting. Demo, The Last Recital is a rhythm music game in which the player must hit notes to the melody of the music, enjoy the rich storytelling, as well as tons of DLC content. So, basically, they describe what a game of that nature is by saying you must hit notes to the melody of the music, like every rhythm game. And then also saying, Oh, by the way, expect to buy more after the fact. 
it's just interesting description. This one written well. I don't think any grammatical mistakes I can tell, but just bad, bad sentence. To You're use. basically telling the buyer, "Hey, buy our game and then buy more stuff." And also, by the way, we're gonna here's, act like here's the definition of a really genre, is. and here's what most people don't like about modern video games. Up next, Farpoint PSVR exclusive to digital and retail. Farpoint is a riveting VR space adventure set on a hostile alien planet on a mission to pick up scientists studying an anomaly near jupiter a sudden rupture nearby sends you and their station crashing onto an unknown alien world separated from your colleagues you must use holographic logs scattered throughout the landscape to reunite with the scientists and escape the planet i find that interesting that it focuses on you must use holographic logs and rather like it it is a space adventure game it, it doesn't it never really pitches itself as like a first person shooter or like killing aliens or anything like that. Yeah, I, I was going to say cuz you were you were talking off the air earlier about the the gun peripheral. And so it's the yeah. way the description well, doesn't seem like you would even need that. Doesn't even mention the controller. We'll wrap back to around that in a second, but let's continue. Feature unfolding PS4 digital uh action adventure that is all about exploration. Your goal is to unfold the mysteries and solve the puzzles hidden in the beautiful landscapes around you. Hakuiki Kyoto wins PS Vita only very cool digital retail uh looks like it's a remastered game injustice 2 ps4 digital retail oceanhorn monster of the, of the sea ps vita digital finally yeah finally not cross so by supposedly played... which is bullshit but we'll get to that later are you guys juiced about this because i uh have it on iphone and i think it's a mediocre like zelda clone i, I got it for the ps4 when it came out and okay. i really enjoyed it I enjoyed it as much that I got the platinum. So nice. Okay. Yeah. I am the same. I have it on iOS. I have it on PS4. Um, and I bought it on PS4, just assuming, and I guess that's my fault, um, that it, that this game, this blatant Zelda clone, would be cross by on Vita. Um, but I guess it's not going to be. And maybe maybe it will be cross by, and then maybe I'll have to apologize next week. But I probably won't. Um, I'm annoyed that it's not cross by. I'm I'm more excited that they announced the second one. And I'd rather play that than this. Yeah, one. I'd rather I'd rather just wait for that then. Why am I gonna rebuy this a third time? If you haven't played it, I think you should buy it on the beta because it, it. I'm sure it's gonna work. It's gonna play really good in the beta. I can agree to that. Hopefully. If you don't have it on PS4, or it is iOS. a mobile. It's a, it's a mobile game, so I mean, it's gonna work perfectly. Yeah, hopefully it runs well. Next, we got Operation Babel, New Tokyo Legacy, PS Vita Digital Retail of a stack. Ooh, okay, wow. I, th I just assumed this was like a visual novel, but continue the story of Operation Abyss to defend near future Tokyo from a threat in this dungeon crawling RPG. When a mysterious object of the embryo appears in the sky, the CPA and the X squad, that's X T H. Is it supposed to be 10th and that's... they're just writing it weird? I guess the Ted Scott, yeah, that also probably makes more sense than the X. I'm not squad. saying you're wrong. I mean, it could be that. Yeah, I, just I, know, I don't, don't know. know if that's yeah, like their easy. logic. Venture into challenging the labyrinth to create the perfect team to challenge each threat. That description sounds good. A cool dungeon crawling RPG for the Vita mm. in you 2017. Think you're pick it up? Definitely not. But um, <laughs> the idea that it exists and the idea that Vita is getting good game, like different genre games rather than um, visual novels and like those type of games. Is great. I mean, the beta's keep getting it's it's still getting like one or two games every week, and it's getting solid yeah. games. I mean, not games that I might not personally be interested in, but it's getting solid games, games that people it's, like. It, it, yeah, it seems like it's it's getting games that Vita owners want to play. So that's great. Next, we got Seasons After Fall, PS4 Digital, Shadow Warrior Two, PS4 Digital, out five nineteen, Skylar and Plux Adventure on Clover Island, PS4 Digital, out five nineteen. The that looks like a knockoff of um, Ratchet and Clank. Of, uh, <laughs> yep, that one <laughs> looks. Oh my god, it just, looks like a flagrant. Look no, Skylar looks... and Plux. It... Skylar and Plux Adventure on Clover Island is an enthusiastic, enthusiastic revival of the legendary 3D platform genre with classic gameplay, playful gadgets, and a lighthearted story set in a gorgeous. It looks like Ratchet and Clank mixed with adventures. Ratchet and Clank mixed with Banjo Tooie or Banjo Kazooie. Yep. Yeah. Why not? We'll see uh, people seem to be like whatever. We'll see. Go buy it and enjoy it, I guess. Next, the Surge PS4 Digital. This looks like a solid, like 2005, 2006 era, uh, like PS2 game, like double A PS2 game, which I'm I'm happy. I guess they're still around. I don't know. Those games are always weird. Like like the games that you never heard of that you go to like do a GameStop or something and just like see like 
Never heard of this game. Whereas like nowadays, like any game in the GameStop, you most likely heard of. And then last game rounding out this week is Tango Fiesta, PS4 digital game, top down shooter. This looks like a cross between Guacamole and um, what was that game that was the, the when they did the choose the the free PS Plus game? Um, it was the one where it was like making fun um, of like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, oh, Ooh, fuck, Bro Force. Bro Force. Bro Force yeah, it looks like Bro Force actually. meets Guacamole. Possibly, at least, Honestly, at least the at least week, the picture for it is. This week looks like it has a. We got a lot of good AAA and it got uh, and a lot of good indie games. So, video games are good and alive. But let's, we got um, something good for uh, PSVR, so I mean, we can complain. Yeah, about. big game for PSVR. It's solid. Um, I, I wish I had a PSVR. My uh, my buddy has one, so maybe I'll see if you can, maybe I'll convince him to get it and then bring it over. All right, but yes, yeah, so let's double back on some uh, on the earlier game. Farpoint VR, P- just Farpoint, I guess. I don't, so that's I don't pick of the week, you think? Could... What about Injustice? You're not, no one's in, interested in Injustice 2? I'm not into fighting games, so... I dug Injustice 1, um, but I'm not... Like, I play them for a week or two, and then I sell them, so... Yeah. If I, I hadn't it... played it, probably be Ocean Horn for me. Yeah. Oh, I, for- I forgot about Pick of the Week, by the way. That was totally think. My Pick of the Week is probably... Uh, Unless Farpoint shits the bed. Yeah, Farpoint I'm going to rent on Gamefly still. Um, and Injustice 2, I have a Steam shared library with my brother, so I might give that a try. But uh, my personal pick of the week is probably... Uh, oh my god, how is that not on this fucking list? Also coming out Tuesday, Zombie Chronicles, the DLC. Oh, because it's DLC. For Black Ops 3. Pick of the week. That's Zombie DLC. Chronicles that's not on the drop. It's the DLC, that's so play. that's not that's in common. That's not on the drop. That's my pick of the week. All right. I'd probably go, uh, I'd probably go Oceanhorn as well if you haven't played it. Yeah. Yeah, so. if you haven't played it, just buy it. It's it's a great little Zelda knockoff. Yeah. And PS Beta. So I mean, why not? So doubling back on uh, for our topic of the topic of the episode. Toast, 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 toast. toast. VR peripherals. So Farpoint VR comes with a little new toy called the aim controller. And what it essentially is, is a move controller attached to, no, a, just like a square controller. I don't know. Look it up. It's, it's an odd shape and it has a ball on it. So. And it looks, it looks yeah. similar to the one they released for the, what was it? Kill zone two or three? It was three. So it's not, no, it's not the three. same one. Nope, and the one uh, for Killzone doesn't even work. I'm just I'm trying to look up the price for this. Guy was SOCOM four a PS Move game too? Why am I thinking SOCOM yeah, four? SOCOM four did have move yeah. compatibility and was yep. the only other game besides Killzone three to support that. Maybe uh, that's because I bought Killzone three and SOCOM four at the same time, and I, I thought I was gonna like SOCOM four better just because I was always a SOCOM guy when I was younger. Okay, yeah, and and um, I ended up obviously liking Killzone three way better, and SOCOM four was trash. Okay, so here it is. I sold my for like the, anyways. You could get for eighty dollars, you get the PSVR aim controller Farpoint bundle. That comes with the game and this controller. Um, and also based on what I'm looking at, based on everything I saw, this isn't a controller that you could also use as or maybe you could use it as a regular move, but it's not it's not a move controller in a shell. It's its own thing. You can't take that that whatever that sphere is not attached to a move controller. That sphere is attached to the piece itself. So my question here is, even though so I'm pretty sure the um, the old one came out, uh, the the Killzone one came around like a hundred dollars or something. It was I think it was a little expensive. And the question here is that even though it's extra thirty dollars, is it even worth it to have this piece of plastic that you have? There's no promise of it being supported on another game. That you're literally buying a piece of plastic for a single game. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, no way, no way would I ever buy that. Um, Ed, go ahead. Um, I don't know. I mean, just coming from a person that, like I said, I bought Killzone Three with. Yeah, I bought the Killzone. It was either the Killzone Three bundle with the thing, with the move, or it was SOCOM Four, and I bought the other one out of the car. I don't remember which one it was, but I didn't use it for anything else. And like you said, there's no promise. Um, I mean, Resident Evil Four, us uh, Resident Evil Four, Resident Evil Seven. 
is like the other major like really big first person shooter ish vr game and that doesn't need it what, like what games coming out are gonna need this peripheral so for me personally if you don't need that peripheral i'm not buying it i think it depends if you trust in sony that they're gonna come out with some other games they're gonna use it looking back into it probably don't buy it i'm sure you're gonna be good enough with just playing with the controller Now I don't know enough about this game. Do you think you need this peripheral to play it? No, you don't. You don't. No, can, you don't need it. The game could be played with a controller. Yeah, no way. A then, this, no way. Oh god! So I'm trying to figure out how much the sharpshooter costs, the one for Killzone, and I'm just being reminded about this other thirty dollar or cheaper uh, PlayStation Move peripheral, which was just the pistol looking one. Y'all remember this? Yep. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yes, that was I bad. Do. Oh come! Which actually I think had more game support for it. Uh, I think uh, the, some Time Crisis games supported that as well. But just, I, Sony, no, I, no. I bought the $400 thing. I have two move controllers. I have a camera. You, you can't just be pulling money out of me and barely giving me things, games to play with these toys. Like, well, I, I'm sure they could patch um, the Until Done game. And so you could use the, the controller with that. Instead but that the uses the two. Mode two guns it doesn't use just one mm -hmm. that's true now in theory because well, you had two pistols that's yeah right. in theory yeah. you could just use the old kill zone socom 4 one right it's the same shape no no so what's going on with this aim controller is it's got tech all around it hmm um, it's not so it's built it's specifically not for a far point then there's um yeah so like there's like it's, it's built for the VR or gyroscopes, overall. like in, uh, in the whole body. So, like, it's it's actually so, plugging into the charging ports or whatever ports for the move controllers, and then it's going off of that. No, 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 no. It's it's not. You don't use your move controller. This is a, oh, this a, a is the controller piece. I thought you. Oh, this okay. I'm sorry. You did yeah, say this that. This is and a I missed piece of plastic that. with the with the spear with the on top. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You did say yep. that, and I missed it. So, um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really funny to me. Why is exactly. why is Sony wasting resources on building this peripheral that's going to be used for one game? What are you doing? I, yeah, I feel like it's, it should be a rule of thumb in all video in the whole industry. You can't release peripherals without a list of at least okay, like three okay. games. Okay, let's step back a little bit. If uh, BR starts selling and they do uh, a second um, PlayStation BR two, and if there's shooting games. Let's just say Call of Duty comes out with a game that's on VR. You're going to need that kind of ta tech, right? If you want to use the actual gun to control your guy, to go through pretty much the campaign with it, that's going to be something that you might need. Yes. So they're in, they're probably investing for the future, not for right now. But was this something they designed two years ago before they decided to stop talking about the VR? probably <laughs> I don't know man I, I just think it's I hope not I, I hope a bunch of games come out that support this I just uh, we yeah, don't know anything it, it, if, if you want me to buy this tell me another game that's going to support it and tell me not even okay another, okay here's a, here's a question for you me, then how many games need to games. support this for you to buy it or for you to care about it or want to keep it two or three games that I'm juiced about that will that will justify having this extra piece of plastic in my household, in my room. And how much is Farpoint standalone? Fifty. So this peripheral is, is if you if you're just purely going by MSRP is thirty dollars is is a thirty dollar additionally to the a la carte game. That you can yeah yeah but you can't even buy it separate but yeah thirty dollars. I'm sure they're gonna have to sell it separate later, but it's probably gonna be like around forty or fifty bucks. You just got a little pre-order bonus. All right. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait for these things to price drop, even at a price drop. If it's only going to be one game and the game doesn't really get enhanced that much, don't pick up extra pieces of plastic. With that said, let's move on to fake pieces of plastic, I guess. Not the best segue. The trophy room, where we, we talk got... about the this week's trophies and... 
We got two games in here. We got Injustice 2. It's releasing on uh, May 16. It has 60 bronzes, one silver, one gold, and one platinum. Now, I went through the through the trophies. They're pretty much, you know, fight a line 200 times, which if you play that game, it should be easy. Uh, win 10 games and um, online. Win 50 games online. But the, I think the hardest one that's going to take some time is reach. It's called Masters of All Trades, which is reach max level with all characters. How long is it going to take for each character? Who knows? I'm sure it's going to depend on that. What I you remember uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. Nine had a trophy like that. I was like, spent tw- play twenty four hours with each character. Oh yes, I Remember hope it's not one? similar to that. So only hardcore if... injustice players are going to be getting pretty this. much. There's no yeah, potential of any of the three of us getting this platinum ever. Yeah, unless it's I'm... really easy to rank them up, but I doubt. I it. absolutely I doubt it. I mean, right. just judging on their track record, because even MKX, um, I don't know if there was an exact That's parallel me. platinum, but I, I know it was something like play a lot and uh i'm sure this is based on an injustice trophy which was based on a mortal Kombat trophy so and second game that we have it's farpoint releases on may 16 has 34 bronzes nine silver three gold and one platinum going over the trophies again pretty easy just complete the campaign pretty much and it has a bunch of collectibles, yep. Uh, but the hardest with... ones yeah. are probably the challenges because you got to complete them with um, a three-star rating. Yeah, depending on how hard those are. And also, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing uh, co-op trophies. Yep. And I just added this just for you, Jeffrey. Yeah. That um, we all know on Tuesday, the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombie Chronicles are coming out. Yeah, and so it has 12 bronzes, 12 bronzes, and we're looking at a lot of um old uh old trophies coming back. Um, so we're looking at all of the Easter eggs for uh Moon Origins and Shangri La net you, net you bronzes, which used to net you silvers, interesting back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, there's I think a two new ones with um on Kino der Toten. And uh, in Verrucked. But I am a little sad to see not more trophies and not more, uh, uh, not higher grades. Because, like, there's no trophies for the for original map, Nocturne Toten, which I thought would be cool to see, like, I don't know, just something original with that, you know? Like, they had, I don't know, they had, like, a really cool opportunity. You know, we got a new trophy list for a really old gate, a really old, uh, a really old map when it came out trophies like and achievements were really like fully like in like in their own you know uh, well like people people didn't really like according to understand. the developers that have talked about it each game has a limit uh a limit of trophies that they could hit and probably because of that if it was standalone maybe they would have put maybe a platinum trophy on it yeah, but it's not. I really hope they release so, a standalone. I know, I, I know they won't, but yeah. Just think about well, how I mean, many people sold the their game. Black Ops Three already because it's two Call of Duty. I'm sure out. you could get it for probably. Oh, 15, sorry. 15, Re- retract Black that. Retract that. There is a trophy for Nocturne Town, and there's a new one. Don't let. Do not let any zombies enter the building during the first three rounds. That's actually a really cool trophy. Okay, that's an, that really that's is a new one. For then. some reason, I thought that. Unless maybe that was on the iOS one. It could have been on the iPhone. Maybe that's um, I don't know. It might have been an achievement because I definitely don't remember. No, damn. World at War did have trophies. I don't know. I may be wrong on that one. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, I'm still upset at not having higher grades. They're all bronzes. But that could be a limit that the developers Maybe have. it's just because Next. they've already had four pretty big DLC packs too. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. But like... I think that's. I think they're. I think they're over a hundred trophies with this. Already. But then again, that's how do like there. um, like DC Universe Online? I don't know how they add trophies, and I don't know what their deal. The pinball packs. games also. Yeah, exactly. Like, games. what are they limited to? So that's something maybe we can look into and uh, bring up next week. Yeah, do some more research on 
drove yourself. But yeah, bring, walking over to the community now. Let's bring it to the question of the episode. We're looking at T-Bone from the Kind of Funny Forums. Uh, remember, you could ask a question uh, by leaving a comment on the Facebook post for this in the Kind of Funny Facebook group uh, by messaging us on Twitter um, and uh, by commenting on a- a- anywhere you see this podcast. Uh, you could message and us. And I think maybe or, you know maybe what? a set on. day during the week we might make it. a post for questions too. Yeah, yeah. This is still episode one, ironing out the kinks, but we'll make sure you you guys know where to contact us. I think we'll even open up an email address. We'll, we'll figure out as way. we go. We'll figure it out. You guys will know. First. We'll make it clear where um, to leave but, questions. Yeah. So T Bone says, "I'm playing Horizon, and for that, I thank you, um, them. I thank PS. I love you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, guys. Well, we got one more next week." As I wait in the tall grass, mark targets, lure them over, and wait for them to get close enough for a stealth takedown, I think about how much I love doing this in Metal Gear Solid Five and Uncharted 4, and it feels great here in Horizon. Gorilla has certainly hit a sweet spot in so many ways. Gameplay, story, quality, etc. If you can answer without spoilers, how would you like to see if the gameplay evolves in, her, in her Horizon sequel? Um, yeah. Miguel, you want to go first? Okay, hold on. Who's beaten the game? Who's beaten Horizon so far? I haven't beaten the game. I, I haven't beaten the okay. game. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, because you and I both have it platinum. Uh, Miko. Okay, yep. yeah, you want to go first? Well, uh, gameplay, we, I thought it was pretty solid. They might change. Oh, man. They might. They, okay, the only thing that I. They might change, or I hope they change. And the gameplay wise is the climbing they well especially like now in, that we're uh, in a let's, post let's see like uh, tomb raider at least you you're able to climb stuff with the picks i, I don't know if you guys have played a uh, tomb raider game but you're able to climb stuff with the picks i know there's only yeah, certain yeah, places yeah. Tomb raider does have more climbable environments yeah. in this game i, I feel like horizons think... was kind of Uncharted-esque, where like, here's a yellow yes, block, grab was, onto it, it was real which, which isn't that, that frequent, you know? And also funny, because Uncharted 4 got rid of the climbable yellow blocks. Gameplay-wise, I'm pr- probably that's it, because I, I think it was, in my opinion, it was solid. It felt good. Um, story, I mean, story, it was great, too. And the quality it just can't get better than that. Right, I mean, it's probably the best game on the PS4 right now. Um, I'd say it's definitely one of. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite games in recent memory on the console. Um, for me personally, I'm trying to think. The things that Horizon did the best were the archery and yes. the scanning, um, specifically like finding what parts of a, um, you know, what parts of the enemies you can uh, hit, and then you can go into your pause menu and see like read about their their weak spots i think maybe work on melee combat improve that a little bit because melee if you chose to play that game as a melee game it's just mash r2 until you beat everything to death so maybe maybe but improve on that a little bit on what what sense though uh, maybe add different melee weapons that do different things because i know they added the the blaster melee weapon towards the end of the game if you unlocked it um or even mm-hmm. just combos really you know I feel like uh, are there combos? Later? Can you unlock combos? No, not really. It's, just... It, it's just... no, pretty much. Uh, you could upgrade, and it's gonna be easier to um kill or override the uh, the robots. Yeah, the combo much. for yeah. melee is basically hit R three R two three times, and it's swing, swing, heavy swing. Yeah, if they can match the melee with how if they can make the meleeing as varied as the bow and arrow is, the archery is. I think May- maybe definitely... maybe uh, maybe just more abilities. You know, um, like hack from a distance instead of running up to them. Uh, maybe make that like a late game unlock. But that's what it made it fun, though. Getting close. Well, that's what I'm saying. Make it like a late no game. No one unlock. around you. Yeah, you could, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get anything because the game is so solid that it's it's, it's tough really to good, think yeah. about and uh, improve it. And that's why uh, we don't need to do it. Gorilla <laughs> needs to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, um, thank God for I that. think they got their work cut out for themselves making better gameplay um the i almost thing, feel like, like said, you don't even don't need to worry about making the gameplay that much better because um you mentioned before with tomb raider 
Rise of the Tomb Raider really didn't add that much new to the gameplay. It just added a way better story. So maybe they tweak little things with the combat and then maybe just go all in with a brand new amazing story. Or maybe new location, maybe new um, new story beats. Um, it's so tough trying to stay spoiler free. Um, just if you haven't oh, beat yeah. Horizon yet, you need to go beat Horizon because it's so yeah. good. Like, go by. like the the story throughout yeah. is pretty solid, but once you get to like the last like third of the game, the story just gets so cool. But even yep. on that, I feel like we don't there we don't we shouldn't expect and we don't really need a sequel anytime. Oh, soon. I'm sure we're getting one though, whether we like it or well, not. And I'm sure we will like it. It's probably gonna be two or three years from now. I, I, I want Gorilla to uh, go away for like three or more years, honestly. Oh yeah, if the, if there if a Horizon Two is real, which I'm sure it is, I'm sure we don't see that for three four years, like you said. And I don't think we need it because we have so many other huge PlayStation games coming out yeah. that have no uh, release if you, dates. If you look at like their last game, their last game's turnaround was Killzone uh, Two, Three, uh, Shadowfall was uh, Nine, Eleven, and uh, yeah, Eleven. Yeah, so it was launch no, window, right? I think, 13? I, I think pull that back. It was launch window. Eight, 8, 10, 13. So I'm still a little unclear. Is it two games. separate studios? Like, is it a, is the Gorilla no, Studio that we're on? one studio. Right now, it's... It's, it's, one, it's one studio. What they're doing, it's pretty much what uh, Naughty Dog is doing. Well, they broke they're, off a small uh, part to start working yep. on Horizon while they were finishing Killzone. Because yeah, they've been working they for Horizon, Horizon, supposedly, for around 10 years. That's what yeah. they, they they said. So I mean, now they have the engine running. Everything's running. A couple gameplay. Okay. Upgrades, okay. So here story, here's a, another game. question, just because we brought up the game running, and then it made me think of the engine that it's running on, and then it made me think of another game running on that engine. Do you think we see a Horizon Two before we see Death Stranding? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm not even thinking about it. Yes. Because they're gonna give time to um Kojima. They're gonna give time, and that game is probably gonna be out in 2020, the earliest. I think we're gonna see them in the same year, actually. Really, uh, same year. I think we, if Kojima is ahead of schedule, which I'm sure he's not, I think we see Death Stranding a year before, and I think Death Stranding has a tease for Horizon, like the, like an Easter egg, like like how like how Last of Us had an Easter egg in Uncharted Three, something like that. I think the real question is how hard is PlayStation pushing Gorilla? How like are they saying like, all right, we need a new one right now? You know, like oh, we don't need it. Right I think now. if PlayStation's yeah, no, smart, you let them do their thing, which is what yeah, they seemingly I, I, did with Horizon One. Um, but who knows? Because yeah, the Sony yeah. I mean, seems to be kind of changing a little bit. The studios. But is this There's is Sony time. right like on this day? What are we recording? May fourteenth. Are they the same Sony? And I guess this can spin off into another question. Is this the same Sony that launched the PS4 that was all about games and all about the fans? Because it seems like, I, I mean, so. they abandoned the Vita. They're starting to kind of go quiet on the on the VR. We don't know if they're going to talk about it again. I don't know. I feel like you let Gorilla do its thing, and I don't think you pressure them into getting out of Horizon 2 anytime soon. You let them just get that game ready and let it come out as amazing as the first one did. Guys, True Apple J emails us from the kind of funny forums with this topic for with a with an entry for this trophy could go fuck itself. This trophy could go fuck itself. I just saw he writes this trophy could go fuck itself. I decided to start platinum trophy hunting on a secondary account to attempt a hundred percent completion rate. The first game I mistakenly chose to platinum, Dying Light. Wow, that was a parentheses and a question mark in that one. That was confusing three. Yeah, guys. Now, <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love Dying Light, but fuck the trophy Homo Hominy Lupus Est, which requires you to save 15 survivors from the henchmen of the main enemy. Where, where's the problem, you might ask? In order to do so, you have to trigger a random encounter, which only shows up in three rough areas of one section of the map and is totally random. It gets worse when you factor in one of the set areas being locked out via unlocking a safe zone. I have been trying to trigger the encounters for three damn days. I am only at 11 out of 15 encounters. This trophy could go fuck itself. Yeah, it sounds like a bitch. So, okay. Uh, My thoughts on this are I am totally on board with non-scripted events in games. Um, Bioshock 1, which I mentioned before, is one of my favorite games of all time, is 
excellent at non-scripted events happening in that game, don't tie a trophy to it. You know what I mean? If, if it's going to be something that's going to block you from getting a platinum, be sure you can trigger that trophy. Don't make it something that someone needs to have luck in making something happen to them. And I'm not even talking about like luck with it popping and getting glitched. I mean, having luck with making the event to cause it happen. RNG. Any, any, any RNG trophy is always the worst. But yeah, I agree. Uh, so uh, have you guys played the game though? I played it. Dying I Light. played it a little bit. I didn't. Um, I put like five hours into it. It was really fun. I think I just bought it when other stuff was out, so I, I just didn't. Um, I moved on quickly. But that's another game. If I had time, I would totally go back to it. Um, I really liked no. the day night cycle stuff. Um, it was terrifying to play during the night sequences. Um, but yeah, I. I I didn't play it um, as much as I would have liked, but I really, I, I was really surprised with that game specifically how well the parkour stuff worked. Because I was just like parkour in a zombie game. It's kind of seemed tacky, but it, it worked. Because I I bought it the the um, collector's edition or the completed edition. My bad. And I started the game, and it just gave me a headache for whatever reason. I think it was the parkour, all the moving, and the the bright colors, man. You think it was like the motion, like like Probably, maybe like man. the frame rate mixed with the motion blur or whatever it is moving. I think that's what it is, man. Because man, I started playing and I played. I tried playing it for like an hour, and it was just getting worse and worse. I had to turn it off, and then I played a couple days later, and it was the same thing. Yeah, sounds like you need you need a friend to help pick you up from being dizzy. Speaking of friends, you want to know who your PS best friend is for the week? Who is it? Um, I went from Griffithless. Yeah, you can go ahead and try to spell that forums. one. Doesn't matter, because that, that name's not what you get to add. But this is the segment where we shout out a best friend from the PlayStation community. Um, right now, kind of, I guess, from the kind of funny community. But, you know, if you have any friends who aren't kind of funny fans, but like PlayStation podcasts, send them a link to this. Get them in on the community. But he writes to us, hello, best friends. I have been a kind of funny fan for quite some time now, but I rarely post on threads or comments on videos. I'm currently looking for PSN friends. All my real friends, real life friends, are all PC master race, and I ain't about that life. My PSN name is Alien Three One Four One Five. Let me change my name, he says. And I mostly play a lot of first person shooters. My current jams right now are Titanfall and Call of Duty, but I'm willing to play most anything. Thanks, folk. That is Alien Three One Four One Five. So three one four like pi, and then fifteen. So so um, j- just to just to follow that up real quick, Alien Three One Four One Five. When they do let you change your name, I don't know if you want to change it to your name on the forums because that's hard as balls to pronounce. Yeah, I, yeah, because I, I think you could change your forum name. You, you chose not to. And I'll just spell that so, out: G R R F U F U L Y U S. So Gerfuffalus, Gerfuffalus, Gerfuffalus. Okay, all right. No, I got. I thought there was going to be some hidden thing when you spell it out, like G R F U F U I C U P or something like that. Gerfuffalus. All right, it's not that bad then. I take that back. What's bad, though, is this week's PSN's worst name of the week. Looking at over, sent in by Tavanas, Tevo Sensal from Kind of Funny Forums. Hey, guys, I'll keep it short. My wife was playing the new Battlefront DLC while I was working. I happened to glance at the TV when I saw what she, when I saw that she was killed by McNutsack31. This made me laugh uncontrollably until I cried. I thought it was pretty funny. Anyways, please, Shue, please let us change our name. That's a pretty good one. Signed, Gustavo. McNutsack. Yeah, I yeah. Now that's a now okay, yeah. this is something that I don't know if it was ever brought up in the past. Do we want to let them change their name or do we want to make them change their name? Um I don't care. I'm not offended by it at all, but that that's a topic of does McNutsack31 want to change his name or do we want McNutsack to change his name? We being just like the PlayStation public, not us on the podcast. No, anyone could have any name they want. We should go I mean if they Shoot. like it, you know, <laughs> that's not? what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like, please, Shuhei, should we t- let like let us change our names, or please, Shuhei, monitor what people are naming themselves? <laughs> is more what this post seems to be saying. Probably, yeah. 
That's what they mean. Because, anyways, it's fun. Because yeah, because this one's not really like I. I if I was McNutsack thirty one, I would not want to change my name. But I could see why. Uh, or maybe no. Hold on, hold on. Actually, wait. If you're, let's say, you made this name when you were. 13 years old now you're 21 or something and you go to the office and someone asked you want to play some battlefront later as as like a grown man you gotta be like yeah it's mc and you is this Mc, mcnutsack Are you, is that what you're spelling out john yeah yeah it's mcnutsack but i don't know that's <laughs> Dude, funny I don't know. at any age really do we even... my co-worker tells me that i'm gonna laugh yeah i'm gonna think i'm gonna pretty funny well, what if you're the boss? I don't know. I feel like if you're playing video games, then you make not sex. If you're playing PlayStation with your boss, no, I'm sure your boss yeah. is going to hear you say some fucked up shit on Battlefront anyway. Yeah. Or Battlefield. Is that supposed to say Battlefield? It says Battlefield. It says Battlefront. Battlefront. And there's no de- new DLC yeah. for Battlefront, but I don't know. It could be Maybe. just they're jumping into the Rogue One DLC late, and good on them because that's a great game. Yeah, I, I probably, probably just bought the game because it was on sale a couple weeks ago. So That's true. Battlefront's always on sale a lot. <laughs> but anyways guys this has been the first episode of playstation best friends podcast thank you so much for listening um over the next couple of weeks over the next couple of episodes we'll definitely be working out a lot of kinks um podcast will be uh i guess flow better i don't know if you have any comments if you have any recommendations any segments anything to say um we're going to of course be aiming for tuesday release uh it's going to coincide with uh, any new games that come out, uh, the big news stories, which, you know, Tuesdays, if we were reading the drop earlier, games seem to not really be caring about when they're coming out these days. Um, but uh, remember, you can search us on iTunes, um, the main post, and where you get to see it and where, you, like, uh, the comments would be most visible are on the Facebook page, on, on the Kind of Funny Facebook page. Um, we'll be posting it around 12 Eastern time on Tuesdays also. Uh, uh, any other, any other wrap up guys, any other housekeeping we need to get before I go to the plugs in terms of where you could find this and how you could contact us. Like I said, there's going to be an email address at some point. Uh, right now it's going to start from the kind of funny community and fan base and hopefully expand to the general PlayStation fan base. So maybe we'll get some people from some fans from beyond also the idea of best friends playstation is we want to get you guys in on the podcast yeah. uh none of us are in the same room we're all doing this over a discord skype whatever it is you guys want to be a guest host shoot us an email shoot us a facebook yeah. message y'all in um yeah. and we still got to figure out what works better discord skype um if you guys yeah. have an opinion just let us know so we could test it yeah if there's any other cooler uh VOIP applications, send send us over that, that way. Also, send but, in uh, uh, yeah. s- send in recommendations for where you want us to have the, the RSS feed loaded to. Because um, obviously we're going to start with Google well. Play and iTunes. I'm going to look into Spotify. Um, but I use the Apple iTunes, like the Apple podcast app. So I'm not familiar with a I lot mean, of the stuff. Have... So if you are familiar with something else and you, you're diehard with another app, let us know so we can get it on there. Yep. All right. Miguel, where can people find you? You can find me at um, PSN Dark Angel 1010 and at Twitter Angel Alvarez 10. Anthony, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on PSN and Xbox One and um, Steam, although I'm literally never on Steam, at the only X1 spelled out O N E and then the number is 88. So the only X1 88. And then uh, Twitter is twitter.com slash Anthony Palm, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-P-A-L-M. And me, you can find me at me on PSN. I'm going to be playing a lot of Black Ops Zombies this week at Brawl96. And find me at Mr. Brawl96 on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. We'll be streaming uh, Call of Duty Zombies this week. And I usually stream Mario Kart and a bunch of other stuff. That's Mr. Brawl96. Um... If you want to be playing, uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to play zombies, hit me up. Uh, we'll be streaming that. I already got a crew for midnight launch, but you know, it's zombies and zombies is life, ball is life, and all that. So I'm going to be playing for the next two weeks pretty much on no stop 24 7. 
That has been PlayStation Best Friends Podcast. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you all next week. Hope you enjoy it.